Part One, Story Five of Tales of King Arthur and the Round Table by Andrew Lang. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Part One, Story Five: What Beaumains Asked of the King. Part One. As Pentecost drew near, King Arthur commanded that all the knights of the Round Table should keep the feast at a city called Kenkenadon, hard by the sands of Wales, where there was a great castle now it was the king's custom that he would eat no food on the day of pentecost which we call whit sunday until he had heard or seen some great marvel so on that morning sir gawain was looking from the window a little before noon when he espied three men on horseback and with them a dwarf on foot who held their horses when they alighted then sir gawain went to the king and said sir go to your food for strange adventures are at hand and arthur called the other kings that were in the castle and all the knights of the round table that were a hundred and fifty and they sat down to dine when they were seated there entered the hall two men well and richly dressed and upon their shoulders leaned the handsomest young man that ever was seen of any of them higher than the other two by a cubit he was wide in the chest and large-handed but his great height seemed to be a burden and a shame to him therefore it was he leaned on the shoulders of his friends as soon as arthur beheld him he made a sign and without more words all three went up to the high dais where the king sat then the tall young man stood up straight and said king arthur god bless you and all your fair fellowship and in especial the fellowship of the table round i have come hither to pray you to give me three gifts which you can grant me honourably for they will do no hurt to you or to any one ask answered arthur and you shall have your asking sir this is my petition for this feast for the other two i will ask after give me meat and drink for this one twelvemonth well said the king you shall have meat and drink enough for that i give to every man whether foe or friend but tell me your name i cannot tell you that answered he that is strange replied the king but you are the goodliest young man i ever saw and turning to sir kay the steward charged him to give the young man to eat and drink of the best and to treat him in all ways as if he were a lord's son there is little need to do that answered sir kay for if he had come of gentlemen and not of peasants he would have asked of you a horse and armour but as the birth of a man is so are his requests and seeing that he has no name i will give him one and it shall be bowman's or fair hands and he shall sit in the kitchen and eat broth and at the end of a year he shall be as fat as any pig that feeds on acorns so the young man was left in charge of sir kay that scorned and mocked him sir lancelot and sir gawaine were wroth when they heard what sir kay said and bade him leave off his mocking for they believed the youth would turn out to be a man of great deeds but sir kay paid no heed to them and took him down to the great hall and set him among the boys and lads where he ate sadly after he had finished eating both sir lancelot and sir gawaine bade him come to their room and would have had him eat and drink there but he refused saying he was bound to obey sir kay into whose charge the king had given him so he was put into the kitchen by sir kay and slept nightly with the kitchen boys this he bore for a whole year and was always mild and gentle and gave hard words to no one only whenever the knights played at tourney he would steal out and watch them and sir lancelot gave him gold to spend and clothes to wear and so did gawaine also if there were any games held whereat he might be none could throw a bar nor cast a stone as far as he by two good yards thus the year passed by till the feast of whitsuntide came again and this time the king held it at carleon but king arthur would eat no meat at whitsuntide till some adventure were told him and glad was he when a squire came and said to him sir you may go to your food for here is a damsel with some strange tale at this the damsel was led into the hall and bowed low before the king and begged he would give her help for whom asked the king and what is the adventure 
sir answered she my sister is a noble lady of great fame who is besieged by a tyrant and may not get out of her castle and it is because your knights are said to be the noblest in all the world that i came to you for aid what is your sister's name and where does she dwell and who is the man that besieges her and where does he come from sir king answered she as for my sister's name i cannot tell it you now but she is a lady of great beauty and goodness and of many lands as for the tyrant who besieges her he is called the red knight of the red lawns i know nothing of him said the king but i know him cried sir gawain and he is one of the most dangerous knights in the world men say he has the strength of seven and once when we had crossed swords i hardly escaped from him with my life fair damsel then said the king there are many knights here who would go gladly to the rescue of your lady but none of them shall do so with my consent unless you will tell us her name and the place of her castle then i must speak further said the damsel but before she had made answer to the king up came bowmans and spoke to arthur saying sir king i thank you that for this whole year i have lived in your kitchen and had meat and drink and now i will ask you for the two gifts that you promised me on this day ask them answered the king sir these shall be my two gifts first grant me the adventure of this damsel for it is mine by right you shall have it said the king then sir you shall bid sir lancelot du lake to make me knight for i will receive knighthood at the hands of no other all this shall be done said the king fie on you cried the damsel will you give me none but a kitchen boy to rescue my lady and she went away in a rage and mounted her horse no sooner had she left the hall than a page came to bowman's and told him that a horse and fair armour had been brought for him also there had arrived a dwarf carrying all things that a knight needed and when he was armed there were few men that were handsomer than he and the court wondered greatly whence these splendid trappings had come then bowman's came into the hall and took farewell of the king and sir gawain and sir lancelot and prayed sir lancelot that he would follow after him so he departed and rode after the damsel many looked upon him and marvelled at the strength of his horse and its golden trappings and envied bowman's his shining coat of mail but they noted that he had neither shield nor spear i will ride after him laughed sir kay and see if my kitchen boy will own me for his better leave him and stay at home said sir gawain and sir lancelot but sir kay would not listen and sprang upon his horse just as bowman's came up with the damsel sir kay reached bowman's and said bowman's do you not know me bowman's turned and looked at him and answered yes i know you for an ill-mannered knight therefore beware of me at this sir kay put his spear in rest and charged him and bowman's drew his sword and charged sir kay and dashed aside the spear and thrust him through the side till sir kay fell down as if he had been dead and bowman's took his shield and spear for himself then he sprang on his own horse bidding first his dwarf take sir kay's horse and rode away all this was seen by sir lancelot who had followed him and also by the damsel in a little while bowman's stopped and asked sir lancelot if he would tilt with him and they came together with such a shock that both the horses and their riders fell to the earth and were bruised sorely sir lancelot was the first to rise and he helped bowman's from his horse and bowman's threw his shield from him and offered to fight on foot and they rushed together like wild boars turning and thrusting and parrying for the space of an hour and sir lancelot marvelled at the young man's strength and thought he was more like a giant than a knight and dreading lest he himself should be put to shame he said bowman's do not fight so hard we have no quarrel that forbids us to leave off that is true answered bowman's laying down his arms but it does me good my lord to feel your might well said sir lancelot i promise you i had much ado to save myself from you unshamed therefore have no fear of any other knight do you think i could really stand against a proved knight asked bowman's yes said lancelot if you fight as you have fought to-day i will be your warrant against any one 
then i pray you cried bowmans give me the order of knighthood you must first tell me your name replied lancelot and who are your kindred you will not betray me if i do asked bowmans no that i will never do till it is openly known said sir lancelot then sir my name is gareth and sir gawain is my brother ah sir cried sir lancelot i am more pleased with you than ever i was sure you came of good blood and that you did not come to the court for meat and drink only and he bade him kneel and gave him the order of knighthood after that sir gareth wished to go his own ways and departed when he was gone sir lancelot went back to sir kay and ordered some men that were by to bear him home on a shield and in time his wounds were healed but he was scorned of all men and especially of sir gawain and sir lancelot who told him it was no good deed to treat any young man so and no one could tell what his birth might be or what had brought him to the court then bowmans rode after the damsel who stopped when she saw him coming what are you doing here said she your clothes smell of the grease and tallow of the kitchen do you think to change my heart towards you because of yonder knight whom you slew no truly i know well who you are you turner of spits go back to king arthur's kitchen which is your proper place damsel replied bowmans you may say to me what you will but i shall not quit you whatever you may do for i have vowed to king arthur to relieve the lady in the castle and i shall set her free or die fighting for her fie on you scullion answered she you will meet with one who will make you such a welcome that you would give all the broth you ever cooked never to have seen his face i shall do my best to fight him said bowmans and held his peace soon they entered the wood and there came a man flying towards them galloping with all his might oh help help lord cried he for my master lies in a thicket bound by six thieves and i greatly fear they will slay him show me the way said sir bowmans and they rode together till they reached the place where the knight lay bound then sir bowmans charged the six thieves and struck one dead and another and another still and the other three fled not liking the battle sir bowmans pursued them till they turned at bay and fought hard for their lives but in the end sir bowman slew them and returned to the knight and unbound him the knight thanked bowmans heartily for his deliverance and prayed him to come to his castle where he would reward him sir said bowmans i was this day made knight by noble sir lancelot and that is reward enough for anything i may do besides i must follow this damsel but when he came near her she reviled him as before and bade him ride far from her do you think i set store by what you have done you will soon see a sight that will make you tell a very different tale at this the knight whom bowmans had rescued rode up to the damsel and begged that she would rest in his castle that night as the sun was now setting the damsel agreed and the knight ordered a great supper and gave sir bowmans a seat above the seat of the damsel who rose up in anger fie fie sir knight cried she you are uncourteous to set a mere kitchen page before me he is not fit to be in the company of high-born people her words struck shame into the knight and he took bowmans and set him at a side table and seated himself before him in the early morning sir bowmans and the damsel bade farewell to the knight and rode through the forest till they came to a great river where stood two knights on the further side guarding the passage well what do you say now asked the damsel will you fight them or turn back i would not turn if there were six more of them answered sir bowmans and he rushed into the water and so did one of the knights they came together in the middle of the stream and their spears broke in two with the force of the charge and they drew their swords hitting hard at each other at length sir bowmans dealt the other knight such a blow that he fell from his horse and was drowned in the river then bowmans put his horse at the bank where the second knight was waiting for him and they fought long together till sir bowmans clave his helmet in two so he left him dead and rode after the damsel alas she cried that even a kitchen page should have power to destroy two such knights 
you think you have done mighty things but you are wrong as to the first night his horse stumbled and he was drowned before you ever touched him and the other you took from behind and struck him when he was defenceless damsel answered bowmans you may say what you will i care not what it is so i may deliver this lady fie foul kitchen knave you shall see knights that will make you lower your crest i pray you be more civil in your language answered bowmans for it matters not to me what knights they be i will do battle with them i am trying to turn you back for your own good answered she for if you follow me you are certainly a dead man as well i know all you have won before has been by luck say what you will damsel said he but where you go i will follow you and they rode together till eventide and all the way she chid him and gave him no rest at length they reached an open space where there was a black lawn and on the lawn a black hawthorn whereon hung a black banner on one side and a black shield and spear big and long on the other close by stood a black horse covered with silk fastened to a black stone a knight covered with black armour sat on the horse and when she saw him the damsel bade him ride away as his horse was not saddled but the knight drew near and said to her damsel have you brought this knight from king arthur's court to be your champion no truly answered she this is but a kitchen boy fed by king arthur for charity then why is he clad in armour asked the knight it is a shame that he should even bear you company i cannot be rid of him said she he rides with me against my will i would that you were able to deliver me from him either slay him or frighten him off for by ill fortune he has this day slain the two knights of the passage i wonder much said the black knight that any man who is well born should consent to fight with him they do not know him replied the damsel and they think he must be a famous knight because he rides with me that may be said the black knight but he is well made and looks likely to be a strong man still i promise you i will just throw him to the ground and take away his horse and armour for it would be a shame to me to do more when sir bowmans heard him talk thus he looked up and said sir knight you are lightly disposing of my horse and armour but i would have you know that i will pass the lawn against your will or not and you will only get my horse and armour if you win them in fair fight therefore let me see what you can do say you so answered the knight now give up the lady at once for it ill becomes a kitchen page to ride with a lady of high degree it is a lie said bowmans i am a gentleman born and my birth is better than yours as i will prove upon your body with that they drew back their horses so as to charge each other hotly and for the space of an hour and a half they fought fiercely and well but in the end a blow from bowmans threw the knight from his horse and he swooned and died then bowmans jumped down and seeing that the knight's horse and armour were better than his own he took them for himself and rode after the damsel while they were thus riding together and the damsel was chiding him as ever she did they saw a knight coming towards them dressed all in green is that my brother the black knight who is with you asked he of the damsel no indeed she replied this unhappy kitchen knave has slain your brother to my great sorrow alas sighed the green knight that my brother should die so meanly at the hand of a kitchen knave traitor he added turning to bowmans thou shalt die for slaying my brother for he was a noble knight and his name was sir Percard. i defy you said bowmans for i slew him as a good knight should then the green knight seized a horn which hung from a thorn tree and blew three notes upon it and two damsels came and armed him and fastened on him a green shield and a green spear so the fight began and raged long first on horseback and then on foot till both were sore wounded at last the damsel came and stood beside them and said my lord the green knight why for very shame do you stand so long fighting a kitchen knave you ought never to have been made a knight at all these scornful words stung the heart of the green knight and he dealt a mighty stroke 
which cleft asunder the shield of bowman's and when bowman saw this he struck a blow upon the knight's helmet which brought him to his knees and bowman's leapt on him and dragged him to the ground then the green knight cried for mercy and offered to yield himself prisoner unto bowman's it is all in vain answered bowman's unless the damsel praise me for your life and therewith he unlaced his helmet as though he would slay him fie upon thee false kitchen page said the damsel i will never pray to save his life for i am sure he is in no danger suffer me not to die entreated the knight when a word may save me fair knight he went on turning to bowman's save my life and i will forgive you the death of my brother and will do you service for ever and will bring thirty of my knights to serve you likewise it is a shame cried the damsel that such a kitchen knave should have you and thirty knights besides sir knight said bowman's i care nothing for all this but if i am to spare your life the damsel must ask for it and he stepped forward as if to slay him let be foul knave then said the damsel do not slay him if you do you will repent it damsel answered bowman's it is a pleasure to me to obey you and at your wish i will save his life sir knight with the green arms i release you at the request of this damsel and i will fulfil all she charges me then the green knight kneeled down and did him homage with his sword i am sorry said the damsel for the wounds you have received and for your brother's death for i had great need of you both and have much dread of passing the forest fear nothing answered the green knight for this evening you shall lodge in my house and to-morrow i will show you the way through the forest and they went with the green knight but the damsel did not mend her ways with bowman's and evermore reviled him till the green knight rebuked her saying bowman's was the noblest knight that held a spear and that in the end she would find he had sprung from some great king and the green knight summoned the thirty knights who did him service and bade them henceforth to do service to bowman's and guard him from treachery and when he had need of them they would be ready to obey his orders so they bade each other farewell and bowman's and the damsel rode forth anew in like manner did sir bowman's overcome the red knight who was the third brother and the red knight cried for mercy and offered to bring sixty knights to do him service and bowman's spared his life at the request of the damsel and likewise it so happened to sir persant of indy End of part one story five part one